Hi everybody, we're at episode 9 from the Lake Spear Railroad Museum. As things continue to be unsettled, we are very settled and we're continuing to bring you a new episode each and every day. A tour of the Lake Spear Railroad Museum, closed to the public but open to you down at the depot in downtown Duluth. And I gotta tell you right off the bat, this is really gonna be a crummy episode. That's because these were referred to as crummies. You probably recognize it as a caboose, but the man who worked in here, they called it a crummy, and probably for good reason. This particular caboose was built in 1911 for the Duluth, Winnipeg, and Pacific Railway. It was a part of the Canadian National Lines, but it connected Duluth Superior to the Canadian border at Fort Francis. But what the heck is a caboose used for? To answer that question, Zach, our museum docent, is back with us. Zach has studied cabooses, so tell us, what were they used for? Well, Ken, cabooses were essentially a home away from home for uh, a large part of the train crew when they were out doing their uh, job. And back, back in the day, you'd work about 16 hours at a time if you needed to. This is actually a very well-appointed caboose. We have sleeping quarters, working and dining quarters for uh, three crew members. So the uh, conductor would use that space to uh, go to paperwork, uh, look at any train orders that may have come in. So in here we also have a, a stove because in 16 hours you got to eat a few times so the crew would uh, cook and eat on the way while the train was going along. And when they weren't cooking and when they weren't even sleeping sometimes, they would have to come up here in the cupola. The cupola, uh, its intention is to let the crew keep an eye on the rest of the train. A lot of different uh, problems may arise with some of the older freight cars. Sometimes the bearings would catch fire and they would have to alert the engineer and stop the train. Now. Uh, some of the most important work that the crew on the caboose did actually took place outside, so come on outside and I'll give you a look. So one of the most uh, important things that the crew in the caboose engaged in was communicating with the engineer up in front of the train. That's a pretty long distance, so they came up with some very interesting and creative ways to do this. The most common prescribed way was to use a lantern at night and to use hand signals during the day or even flags sometimes. So. Uh, here's your basic signal for stop, here's your basic signal for go ahead, and then here's back it up. Like most good things, unfortunately, the days of the caboose had to come to an end. Right here is uh, the modern replacement of the caboose. It's known as a Fred, or flashing rear end device, and uh, it pretty much takes up the rear of most big freight trains that you might see going by your house. The caboose may have come at the end of the train, but this is not the end of our series. These special segments of interest from the Lake Spear Railroad Museum at the depot in downtown Duluth will continue a new one each and every single day. Remember, we're all in this together, so please do your part. Wash your hands, keep your social distance, cover your coughs. If you're sick, stay home. And most importantly, let's take care of each other.